big, big reaches, and they are almost even. Out of the WBO rules for this championship the fight, 10-point must system, three judges score the fight. There's no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. If an accidental foul occurs before the end of the third round, the fight's rule, the technical draw. If it happens after the end of the third, they go to the scorecard. So here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, set for the WBO Heavyweight Championship, Henry Akinwande against Alex Zulkin. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Well, fans, we welcome you to the first of our three heavyweight championship bouts coming away this evening. Once again, it's all brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision in association with Showtime Event Television the MGM Grand, and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Jimmy Resnick, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the chairman is Dr. James Nave. Introducing to you our judges for this bout from ringside, Dwayne Ford, Mike Gliena, and Dave Moretti. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, working in this his 137th world title bout, introducing Richard Steele. All right, fans, here we go with the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing solid red trunks, he is fighting out of Columbus, Ohio, by way of Moscow, Russia. He weighed in at 235 pounds. His record includes 24 wins, two losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former Soviet heavyweight champion and currently ranked at WBO number one heavyweight contender, introducing Alexander Zolkin. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the defending world champion, entering the ring wearing black trunks from Dulwich, England, by way of Lagos, Nigeria. He weighed in at 238 pounds. His record is undefeated at 30 wins, no losses, one draw, and 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making the first defense of his title. Here is the undefeated WBO heavyweight champion of the world. Please welcome Henry Akinwande. Once again, a referee in charge, Richard Steele, now to give instructions. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. In case there's a knockdown, the man must go to the neutral corner. Stay there till I tell him to come out. Shake hands, good luck. Watch for the safe man to you off the floor. All right, let's take a look at the challenger, Alex Selkin, former Soviet amateur champion, 165 wins as an amateur, 15 defeats, turned pro at 205, now up to 235. Can he neutralize Henry Akinwande's long right hand? He told us, Akinwande, he's fought only one southpaw, Gypsy Fury, in England in 91, a third-round knockout for Henry. He did lose to a southpaw in the 88 Olympics, a Dutch fighter named Arnold Vandele. Richard Steele, the third man of the ring, brings them together. Round one scheduled for 12 for the WBO Heavyweight Championship. Henry Akinwande in the black trunks, Alexander Zulkin in the red. You know, Steve Zulkin's manager... Johnson would not allow me to have any information whatsoever, what he intends to do, what style, what weaknesses. He was so worried that we were going to go and tell Akinwande, and I said, I'm a fighter just like your guys. I would never do that, but he would not give up one bit of strategy or any strengths or weaknesses whatsoever. Extremely guarded in our chat with him yesterday, being careful not to volunteer any, any strategy whatsoever, only to say we're in for a big-time shock. Well, I've, I've seen an awful lot of fighting over 40 years. I can't remember two guys this tall fighting for anything but the heavyweight championship it's remarkable how tall and how athletic both these guys are now, i'm not sure we should have had an opening tip instead of an opening bell well one thing if akawandi wins he goes on to fight tyson and if zalkin doesn't he goes to get a tryout for the miami heat maybe we need a power forward there of his size and as i sit here short and squat i'm just envious of that height 
Well, Zalkin wearing red, which is no surprise coming from where he comes from, Russia. Zolkin still staying a little too far outside. I can one. He's got that jab and a good straight right hand. He seems to have more of a bad intention on his right hand than Zolkin does on his straight left. John Johnson said that Zolkin is the best athlete he's ever coached, and he had Heisman Trophy winner Archie Griffin plus Pete Johnson, who went on to have a tremendous career. This is a lead right hand by Henry Akinwadi, now working the jab to set up the straight right, Akinwadi. Akinwadi comes underneath with an uppercut, but missed. Good defense by Zolkin. holding straight to my stomach. So far, I think both of them watch your telestrator, Bobby, because both of them are doing exactly what you, you suggested. This guy's outside with, it, with the jab and then landing that right hand you showed on the telestrator so well. And then the other guy's trying to come in. When he goes in, he fights, but he can't get in past that jab too well. We know what he's got to bend his knees a little more. He's got to fire something hard to the body, and he's got to give back and wonder a little more of, of a power type punch to respect. Right now, he's just pulling, measuring shots, not hard shots. There it was a nice counter right. left. A lunging right hand by Henry Akinwade. They come together. Zulkin, a confusing, busy southpaw style. Akinwade says, hey, at least I don't have to go look for him. He'll come right at you, as you can see. If he's doing one thing, he's doing the same thing over and over again. He should be able to time that. It's a left jab and a right hand. Left jab and a right hand. Left jab. I mean, you should be able to time that. If, if, you're, if you can't vary it any more than that, you sh uh, Zalkin should be able to time that. Akinwande's big weapon, that long straight right, as Jerry Williams found out, the man who replaced Zalkin in June. You know, I've watched tapes of Zalkin, and he's gotten Americanized pretty quick. He's improved quite a bit over a short amount of time. Two good right hands. By Akawandi. Oh, oh. Down. Oh, almost. Almost. Alex. Oh, Zulkin. Look out. After the foul. After oh, the foul. Oh, Henry oh, Akawandi oh, charging into Alex Zulkin. And I don't play the fans for no, food. That was uncalled for. Okay, don't hit him up in the bell. The bell clearly sounded, and Akawandi came charging across the ring to try and nail oh, Zulkin, and he got him. What is it? Poor Richard Steele is always in some kind of Bermuda Triangle of. Uh, well, you know what happened was Zolkin just stood there. Akinwandi went to the neutral corner as if it was a knockdown before the bell. And Richard Steele just stood there like, you know, okay, guys, you can still fight. No one went down in the bell didn't ring. All right. He's coming. He's coming. He thinks you're hurt. Let's take another look. You understand that? And listen. sounded and Akinwande came rushing across the ring and now he has incurred the wrath of this crowd here at the MGM Grand and Alex Zulkin has become their man. No holy. The right. underdog. As we have we just finished saying that the right hand was finding a home. He hit him two straight good rights in the third one sent him all the way across. Now you know Zulkin somewhere along the line has got to be told there's a right hand coming after every left. You better start thinking about blocking and countering. He's not doing either one neither blocking nor countering. Akinwani just seemed convinced that he was going to eventually hit the floor as he staggered, but he didn't, and he just waited for the eight count, which required none, and then came over in the middle of the rush. The bell rang, but he was already in the motion, so. Yeah, but the bell rang clearly, and he ran all the way across. That was just clearly a foul. It's, he's, he's lucky he didn't take that way, that round away from him. Zulkin lucky. has never been down in his career. We asked him, have you ever been down? He replied, only once in recess, showing his sharp wit. He's, he's funny and a nice guy, but he almost went down that time. He came close. For 235 pounds, he doesn't appear to be punching hard enough to get the respect necessary here. Akinwande's got a little bit of extra courage now. Having staggered Zolkin already, Zolkin needs to unload. Then he saw Zolkin need another straight right down the pipe. Zolkin continues to be the aggressor pressing the attack. It is very similar to the fight we had with Joppy a few weeks ago where Joppy kept landing the right hand and the other guy never figured out how to stop it and he got eaten up by it. You can't accept that right hand from this bigger guy and not feel it. I mean, you know, that's going to turn it. A right uppercut there go, by Akinwane that just missed. There's a cut over the right eye of Alex Zuck and a straight right by Henry Akinwane and that's the area it's just starting that to open we talked up. about. The cut gets worse, Purdy, get and that's what out. originally was the reason he pulled out the first time. Well, that just start lighting some fires right now. Zolkin, already being seeming a little desperate, will now get very desperate. So the sense of urgency now for the challenger.
Alex Duncan in the red. As well he should, Bob. He's being outboxed by this guy. It's a left jab and a right hand and a left jab and a right hand. I mean, you know, come on. Start fighting. Do, and do as soon something. as he gets inside, Bertie, he gets tied up and he's Bertie, allowing it. He shouldn't allow it. Don't hold him. Don't he's got to work him. through that. He, he's got two problems. He's got the right hand banging incessantly and he's got a cut. A uh, short, crisp, straight right. right by Henry Akinwante right on the nose of Alex Zelkin, who's taking some punishment here. There's another beautiful straight right by Akinwante. That one, Zelkin guarded. Akinwante now having his way with those right hands. That right hand is causing Punch damage. Punch it out, Punch it out. This is a great pace for men this big. Zelkin's conditioning right. may play Stand a factor late in this fight if we get there. Oh. As we head for the right. bell. You've got to start finishing with your right hand. You've got to start getting your right hand up. Don't reach with your left hand, you understand? Work off your jab. Work off your jab. Oh, no, this guy's kind of ripping at your ass. No, that's right. Stay down and throw straight. Let's take a look at that good stiff right that is peppering Zalkin. Look at that. Not once, but many times in each round that's landing. And by the way, that cut does not look good at all. He, he, he just has no defense, Bobby. How could he block it, Bobby? Well, he's got to move his upper body a little. He's got to get a little, a little more Americanized with his rhythm. He's got to slide Let's off go, that punch, off. slip it, and bang to the body. He's got to get back and want something to worry about. Well, Zulkin has one of the uh, finest cut men in the business in his corner, Miguel Diaz, but we'll see what he can do. When you got to cut that big 12 or 13 stitches, whatever, that's a lot, a lot of uh, a cut, and it takes a long time to scar down. Now that it's open already, it should open wide. So it's round number three, that straight right which is five seconds left in round one, did the job for Akinwadi, but the straight right connected a number of times in round two as well. Zulkin has really yet to connect with anything. One of the textbook weapons to fight a sample is that straight right down the middle. Bang, you just saw it again. But conversely, the textbook weapon for an orthodox fighter for a southpaw is the straight left. Zulkin is not firing it enough. And the pace has not let up. It has been furious. Keep him up, my boy. Keep him up. From the start. Right uppercuts now by right, Akinwande, right. who is feeling very confident. He's the champion. Akinwande having his way. He is having his way. It's, this is a, a gym workout here for him. He's just popping anything he wants at lands and getting no punishment in return. He's getting nothing to dissuade him. In the meantime, oh, no, Zolkin's face is falling apart. I and mean, if you notice, too, Zolkin is right, still being able to move Akinwande to Akinwande's right. He's able to move. Akinwande's not circling to his left jab. He's stepping to the right, going in to what would be Zolkin's power, but still winning. It's Zolkin who is the one who is coming forward, but it's Akinwande, the one who is winning and landing repeatedly, just like there. Right, twisting uppercut to the body by don't Akinwande. Right, step back, step back, step back. Don't hold, don't hold. Henry Akinwande, undefeated, 30-0-1 with 18 knockouts. And right. Alex Elkin, 24-2 and two with 15 knockouts. Akinwande, very patient, very patient. Now decided to work some on the body. Landed three straight uppercuts to the body. Now Zulkin working the jab to try Punch to set up the left, but doing no damage. And, and nothing on his punches either. His punches look like feather punches. They don't look like uh, damage punches. And you know, Akinwande just holding on. Another straight right Come with on, a glancing blow by Henry Akinwande. Zulkin starting to look a little tired here now. And it's only round three. Straight right hand by Akinwande. Now Zulkin trying to shake, shake it Come off on, and dance around a little bit. Zolkin, as he goes back, he, he keeps receiving this intense punishment. It's not so much tired as it is he's wearing out. He's wearing out. Let him go. Less than 30 seconds left in round three. It has been all Henry Akinwande, the WBO heavyweight champion. Beautiful jab by Akinwande, but couldn't set up the right as uh, Zulkin just tied him up. Zulkin, I don't think it's, it's thrown a meaningful body shot yet. And, and boy, if there's a, an area you can hit, it's this guy. Look at the body. I mean, e no holding, even no the holding. trunks are low. I mean, you, can, you should be able to shoot body shots all day long. End of the round. Zulkin continues to hit him in the back after the bell. Listen, listen. Okay. Deep breath. 
Real deep breath. Real deep breath. Whoa. I get it. Real deep breath. I'm gonna get some deep breath first. All right. You you, you can't. You, he's countering your jab. You got to double your jab and put Thank the left you. hand behind it. Listen. You understand? Here was, you here was Jack, right I wonder what he's doing. Hand he's firing behind. that right he's hand. Right, hand. right. He's firing that right hand down the middle, and he's taking it up and up in here. As we roll the tape, you'll see he's staying on the inside. He takes the jab there, and you'll see the right hand. He takes one underneath there, and there's another one. They keep coming down the middle. It's a little bit more of an awkward position, but he's coming up inside, staying inside. Zolkin, and the Zolkin is not doing the same reverse. They both can because they both have an opposite angle attack. I, I think there's some of uh, Akawandi's awkwardness and uh, and tallness in the style that's confusing Zalkin. I mean, because when he gets in close, it's all arms, and, and I mean, he looks like a grasshopper, and it's, it's hard to tie him up. In the meantime, he uses his awkwardness very well, does Akawandi. He uses his awkwardness extremely well. Round number four. Zulkin won rematches with Mike Hunter and Tony Tubbs, but needs to figure out how to avoid Akinwande's big punches, particularly that straight right hand, and real fast. You see, what Zulkin has to do is when he has to work in, he's using a light jab. He should stuff it a couple times. See what happens. Snap Akinwande's head back, bang him to the body, and rip up right away. Don't wait and go back and set up another combination. He won't have the time because Akinwande's going to tie him up. Great right hand, good defensive move there by Zulkin to shake it off. Exactly. Not only does, he, it out. Not only does right. he punch intelligently, but then he uses defense intelligently. Gets his punches, steps out of range, and keeps on setting up again. Very good on the part of Akawandi. Very good. Akawandi now being very patient, measuring Zulkin out, flicking the jab, doubling up on the jab, and then a right hand, and down goes Zulkin. I'll tell you what, that was a sneaky right hand up on the inside. I think it was a good timing balance shot. Not a great knockdown, not really hurt. That's hey, the first the time Zulkin's been the off his feet in. in his career. So with about a minute 30 remaining in round four, Zulkin on the canvas with a short, crisp right hand. And now Akinwande, single-minded in purpose, looking to end it. Akinwande's probably going to load up on the right hand here, but he should just stay with what he's doing. Work the jab, throw it right down the middle. There he is. See him trying to come just inside the, lever holding. the leverage Break. of Zulkin. Step back. Henry Akinwande continues to hammer away with that straight right hand. It is a beauty. Break. Well, and it was a little delayed effect there, but it's been landing all the time, and he's just wearing him out so that uh, eventually he'll cave in. He did just then, but it wasn't hurt, hurt. It's just exhausted hurt. It was a flash knockdown. Less than a minute remaining in round four. A chopping punch to get out of punch to get out. tomahawk right there by uh, Zulkin, but doing nothing. You see that one shot's not going to work for Zulkin because he's going to get tied up by Akinwandi. Low arms. Akinwandi on the other hand throws two, three, four in the combination, and that's what he has to do. Vicious straight right hand by Henry Akinwandi. Flush on the face of Zulkin. He's got Zulkin backing up, applying the pressure, continues to press. Back punch comes Zulkin to the body with the left hook, punch but again doing no damage. Right uppercut there by Henry Akinwande, but a glancing blow. Akinwande's two right hand crazy right now. He got spoiled by that knockdown. He got to go Break, back to boxing. Back, 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 go. He also remembers what he go, did to Jeremy go. Williams, his last fight. That was with a, a crisp right hand. Chance, you can't get in front of this guy and stay. You gotta get on your toes where you work. You understand that? And spit on this because you're using this breath. This is a salad. This is a salad. This is a salad. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. You're starting to tire. I said you got to get on your toes. Two good looks at this knockdown. Watch the right hand. Just keep your eye on the right hand. Just watch nothing but the right hand. Here he comes. Boom. He hit, and see, it's a delayed reaction. He hit him right. He kind of slipped and, and lost his weight. He wasn't really hurt. Bobby, let, let's take another look. You call it. You know, as I look at it, Ferdy, he's a nice, clean, little short right hand side, but he's pushed him. Watch, watch here. There's the right hand. And then he gets pushed. A little bit of a balance. He slips. I'm not sure why he didn't argue that that wasn't knocked on that. As we yeah. see it on the replay, it's more of a slip, much more of a slip. Bobby, I'm watching this fight. I'm left with one thought. You know the reason that guy didn't tell you how they were going to fight? Because he didn't have a game plan. 
I, I guess so, Steve. Uh, Freddy, I guess so. Bobby, he didn't tell you what he was going to do because he wasn't going to do anything. He couldn't figure out what to do with his tall guy. All right, round five. It's scheduled for 12 for the WBO heavyweight title. Henry Akinwanda at 6-7 in the black trunks. Alex Zulkin at 6-5 right, in the red step trunks. Back. Let him go. Let him go. Henry Akinwanda has dictated the pace, controlled the tempo from the opening bell. He handed Zulkin his first ever knockdown, a minute 10 into round number four, just moments ago. It was a short, crisp right. Punching it on You know, I Come can't on, impress upon you enough that when a fighter can punch, he automatically stifles his opponent's offense a little bit because he's worried about defending against the big bombs. And right now, Zulkin is not punching with any real authority and power, and Akin one day is. Zulkin, not a particularly knockout artist. 24 wins, 15 KOs. Watch this guy. Work. Don't hold him. Meanwhile, Come Henry Akinwande, 30 0 Come on, you guys. And one with 18 KOs. Wait, step back, step back, step well, back. This, if this guy hasn't got any punching power, Zulkin, he is on the outer edges of desperation now because he's uh, Akinwande. Not Come only has he work. won every work. round, but that last step round back. was a 10 8 hour round. Watch he's way ball. behind. Way behind. See, Akinwande is going to hold as soon as Zulkin comes in. He doesn't want to get in that street kind of fight either. Even Come though on, Zulkin doesn't appear to be big bangers. Akin one, he doesn't want to fight inside. Little trickle of blood streaking down the bridge of the nose. Good short right hand by Henry Akin one day. The blood talking about Alex Selkin, the result of that cut over the right arm. Come on, work inside. Don't hold it work. Right, step back. Step one one of those back. shots with the right hand, he's going to turn around and land a hook after the straight right, uh, right hook, and that's going to be the end of this fight. Oh, a blistering right uppercut by Akin one day. Yeah, that was a great shot, partially blocked, but like Freddie said, if he came back with a hook, it was wide open and clearly there. Boy, is it ever there, Bobby. He, he just, he's a one, one punch, he can't do this with Tyson. He ain't going to be able to do this with Tyson. Duncan showing a pretty good chin there. He's, he's showing a good chin, and Akawandi's showing a great right hand. But it's a one-handed fight. He's got to he's got to throw some left hooks. He's got to throw some left shots. He's just loading up now. Is Henry Akinwande and at times telegraphing those right hands, particularly the uppercuts. He comes from a long way. You know, Akinwande could tire a little bit at this pace. Zolkin, although he's not as busy as he should be, keeping good pace, looks to still have plenty left in the tank. Straight right by Akinwande, but glanced off the the left shoulder of Alexander Zolkin. Zulkin uh, trying to get his second win here in the final seconds of, of round five. And round five in the books. Let's go over to Jim Gray. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm now joined by the co-managers of Mike Tyson, John Horn, Rory Holloway. John, the bad blood that has existed. What is the, t the feelings of Team Tyson now on fight night? Well, we're just glad that the fighters finally here. Um, the tension has always been there for years now. And, and the night that people are going to finally see the best fighter ever, ever put on a pair of gloves. And uh, this has always been, number one, a fight. So other than that, that's all we're looking for tonight is fight. Rory, the mood of Mike today out at the house and his mood coming in here tonight. He got stuck in some traffic. I know that had to annoy him. Well, you know, Mike is very relaxed. He's a constant professional. Uh, takes his job very seriously, takes his fight very seriously. We don't understand how he feel. Uh, we understand he's a good fighter, in fact, a great fighter, and we've been looking forward for five years to match Mike's skills with him, too. Guys, good luck. We'll look forward to seeing you after the fight. Let's go back out to Steve. All right, thanks very much, Jim. Those are the two guys that initiated the bad blood between Tyson and Holyfield. Here we go, round six. Henry Akinwande, the champion, and Alex Selkin, the the challenger, the cut over Zulkin's right eye has not on, reopened, but he's got Come lots on. of other troubles to deal with right now. Oh, well, his face looks like he's just hit a, a, a grill. I mean, look at him. His nose is all rumpled up there on top of his eyes, all reddened. You, know, you can't get hit by a right hand that much and not show the effect. It has been a sledgehammer right delivered consistently by the six foot seven Henry Akinwani, but this Zulkin is game. He was put down on the canvas for the first time in his career in round number no four, muscle. but he keeps charging back at the Great. champion. You know, his punches, Zulkin's, that is, it's just not clean, they're not crisp, they're not tough, they're not digging, they're not banging. They're not really affecting Akinwani, and if you leave him be like he is from the outside doing what he wants, when he wants, tie you up, it's just not gonna be impossible to beat him, Steve. Right. The pace of this fight has been 
frantic. It's been furious, and it is really taking its toll on Alexander Zelkin. Although now Akinwande holding on. I think it slowed down in the, in the last, in the la as, as Akinwande is beginning to get tired of hitting this guy with a right hand without an effect. I mean, he's getting a little weary, and I think he's going to take one of these, of these rounds off. It was almost the last round. But as Bobby says, Dawson's not coming up with anything. He's given him the chance to take over, take a little command, let, let the swing come his way, but he, he doesn't have anything to do with This might be the round if Zulkin has any ideas of climbing back into this thing, because as you say, uh, perhaps uh, I can one day taking the round off, although now he starts to come on a little more. So now, right what, now you have a little bit of a fight. You're not dancing, not wrestling, but Zulkin has to get back in his fight right now because he's lost every round. More and steam on those punches by Ekinwande. And his eye is really opening up. Now you're, now you're getting a flow of blood. Now you're getting a flow of blood. Blood all over the face of Alex Zulkin emanating from the cut over the right eye. The same cut that caused him to pull out of the June fight with Ekinwande in Palm Springs. A minute left in round number six. Richard Steele has his eyes right on that cut. He's got his eyes on his face. You know, this is by far Zolkin's best round, too. He's closed the gap. He's gotten some better shots in. But it's just so little, and it's getting late. Akawani just unleashing shots off the top of Zolkin's head with the left. Time being called by Richard Steele. Uh-oh. Here comes the doctor. Here Flip comes him the in. doctor. Flip him in. And how about that wealth over the right eye as well of Alex Zulkin? No, that cut's pretty bad. It's not going to go that much longer. If I can want to keep landing right hands, I will. Come back, come back, Alex. Final seconds come of back. round six. A bad, bad cut over the right eye of Alex Zulkin, and this could be a matter of time. Punch it out! Punch it out! They got to move. Here come Step and pivot. Step and pivot. Okay? Don't try to hit everything you hit. So, Henry, we've got to take him out of there. As long as he stay, he's winning. Okay, Second Everybody going to put pressure on you. Do your thing. You hear? Do your thing. Come on. Hey, give me a shot. Do your thing. Do your thing. Give me a shot. And uh, halfway through round number seven now, and how do you guys unofficially have it scored? I'm afraid I've got it 60-53, and I've got it that way because of a 10-8 round and because I haven't seen Zolkin win a round. You know, it's pretty much 60-53. The last round, you could have made an argument that Zolkin was a little more effective, land a few more shots, and for the first time, use his aggressiveness in an effective manner, but 60-53 sounds good. But then he becomes a bloody mess. They stop the thing, have the doctor look at him, and, and Zolkin gets encouraged, or rather... Akawandi gets encouraged and comes right back to battling. Punch it out. Don't hold it. Come on, you guys. Come on. Round seven scheduled for 12. WBO heavyweight championship. The first of an unprecedented three consecutive heavyweight title fight. Oh, a straight heavy right hand by Akinwande. See what Akinwande does to it. Lands the right hand and then he holds. And Zolkin isn't making him pay. He's got to work in there. See, once again. Akinwandi will just hold and tie up Zolkin, not let him work. And it's a frustrating fight. I know the type of fight that is. It's very, very awkward. And it's point building. If you, if you land two jabs a right hand and then you grab him, he doesn't hit you. That's big points for you. Big points. Alex Zolkin really showing the physical effects and also the frustration. He continues to charge in like a bull, but getting absolutely no results. But Zalkin has stepped up the action. He looks a little bit more aggressive now. He looks like he's trying to carry the fight. He's trying to do something, but come he has on, nothing on, to do it with. He doesn't have the equipment. 
to get in here with this tall guy that's popping him with a jab and with a straight right hand. He Certainly doesn't, a, doesn't have it. A big enough target in front of him. Yeah. It's a pretty good pace for big heavyweights, and these are really tall men. Holy. Obviously, they're not Great. as thick as some Great. of the smaller guys. They probably weigh 270, but this is going to be a very debilitating fight. Come around 9, 10, 11, this is going to be really telling. If Zolpin is, is as good a shape as he says, he could turn the fight there, but he's past the point Great. of return now. Great. Watch your head this time. Great. Let him go. Richard Steele wanting them to watch the heads when and they it, get inside. And it was Zalkin's head he was talking about. Zalkin's got enough problems with his head right now. Come yeah. on, work inside or get out. Uh, he figures he's go. already Let cut. Maybe he can get a cut on Akawandi and even Break. things up. Akawandi has no marks on his face. He looks like he's just opening up for the first round. He's got no marks. Oh, what a right hand by Akawandi. Break. Step back, step back. Now Richard Steele earning his money. Still doing a good job in this fight. Ink the man. Oh, two right hands, finally. Akin one day has to work in behind the jab, but he has to throw full combination and just keep letting him fly. See that one jab or a one, one jab and a jab one, two? That's Break. not going to get it done. Final seconds of round number seven. Is Zulkin hanging around. Oh, and coming up next, it's the IBF Heavyweight Championship. We go backstage into the dressing room of the challenger, Franz Botha of South Africa, getting ready, live, making final preparations. The undefeated number one contender actually getting a second chance at the title, having tested positive for steroids after winning the crown last December from Axel Schultz. And he'll be meeting hard-punching Michael Moore for the IBF Heavyweight title next. Come back with your right hand. In close, rip body shot. Come on now, this guy's getting tired. Okay, you stay there. You gotta get some dog in, champ. You gotta work inside. You gotta, and you're not pivoting. You're not pivoting one bit. You just stand up there, just raising your hand. Don't back straight up. Don't back straight up. Come on now. Come on, Come on, you gotta get after him. John Johnson uh, in front of Alex Elkin. He was on the right of your screen with the earring. The man who guided Buster Douglas to victory in the upset over Mike Tyson back in February of 1990. So here we go into round number eight. By the end of round seven, blood was flowing freely from Zulkin's face. No, Zulkin's cut. I don't know if you saw it in that brief moment. It's big. I mean, I, if you, I mean, the camera showed it perfectly before he covered it up. Work your side and get out. Great. Zulkin's almost step smothering step his own punches. See when he comes inside, he almost comes too far to be effective with his own punches. The reach is almost exactly the same, but his style is that he has to be on the inside. But he still can't be so far inside that he smothers his own shot. And that has really developed into a an ugly deep gash over the right eye of Zulkin. Well, if I had this guy in the gym, Bobby, I would have him throwing a hook after that right hand until he was sick of doing it because he hadn't thrown it once yet. Somebody ought to tell him, hey, a combination is not just one, two, it's one, two, three. You know, I think he's been so successful with the right hand, Bertie, that he's just forgetting about the hook, and that's a tragic Come mistake on, sometimes. A hook with either hand, Bobby. With either hand catches this Break. guy. The, the right lands with such force, the guy is just wide open. Zalkin is wide open for a hook, and he never, he never has thrown one yet after that right hand. Akinwandi now working the jab. Once again, they clinch. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. See, Zalkin gets in so far that he can't even punch. He's smothering his own shots, and he needs to set himself up and give him just a little more distance. Two being outfought and outfought and outpowered. I mean, almost everywhere that you can beat a guy, he's getting beaten. I can wind it looking a little worn out too, but that's probably just from from his offensive flow here, from throwing all those punches. Well, it's, a, it's a quick pace for big men, and certainly these are two of the bigger men in the division, tallest by far. Is I can wind it, but it's going to be tiring to keep throwing those long arms out, keep moving. But you know what? I've seen him fight a lot of 12-round fights. He goes like nothing. I mean, he just puts it in that gear and keeps right on going. I mean, he, don't look for this guy to get all exhausted. I can one day 6'7", 238. Zulkin, 6'5", 235. I can one day 31 years old. Zulkin, 32. Zulkin came in a 3-1 underdog. 
And now Zolkin looking Pass to uh, get, out. get a couple of Watch shots off, Let's but go. he has Henry. very, go. very seldom been able to land in this fight. It's been all Akinwande. Zolkin on the canvas for the first time in his career back in the fourth round with a short right hand. Come on, work it out. Work and even when Zolkin lands, Steve, there's no Pass effect on the punches. He's not hurting Akinwande whatsoever. Final seconds of round eight. Oh, a straight right hand by Akinwande. Flush on the chin. Of Zolkin at the bell. Well, as mentioned, there's the IBF heavyweight championship belt. We take you backstage to the dressing room of the champion, the enigmatic Michael Moore. Looks like he's doing uh, some deep thinking, some praying. He may be just as famous for his lone defeat as he is for his four championship belts. His only loss came almost two years ago to the day, right here at the MGM Grand against George Foreman. So we're here at the MGM Hotel and Casino, the city of entertainment. Las Vegas, Nevada. Later tonight, of course, it is Tyson versus Holyfield, finally, and a sellout crowd of close to 17,000 to be on hand. The big crowd continues to settle in, and they are watching the WBO Heavyweight Championship between Akinwande and Zulkin. Just throw that grease off his face. Round number nine. It is scheduled for 12. Some wondering how Zulkin is still around. Zulkin had to be Work checked a few break. rounds ago by Let him go. house physician on, Dr. Flip Homansky because break. of that dreadful cut over the right eye. Boy, what a look on the on the. Yeah, I was on just going to say he's got huh? some scowl on, Ooh. doesn't he? Doesn't seem to be bothering. Uh, Long, tall Henry at all. Come on, work your saddle, get out. Come on, Henry, don't hold it. Great, set him back, set him back. I asked Zulkin yesterday if he thought the southpaw style would be a factor. Come on, work he said, I don't know and I don't care. Don't hold it. Don't hold it. Well, I know he cares right Great. now. Yeah, I think certainly he bothered care, Henry. It's just one of those things where a fighter gets into a frame of mind that he just wants to go out there and beat whoever it is. Well, going in, the weaknesses we knew about Alex Zulkin was that he can be somewhat mechanical and predictable. Sometimes forgets to punch with leverage, takes a lot of shots, and we're seeing that here tonight. You know, I've seen him on tape, but I've never had the luxury of sitting at one of his fights, and I'm amazed at how well, excuse me, at, at not uh, how good he does not punch. He does not punch well, and I'm amazed that a man of that size and that weight can't turn his punch in with a little more pop to him. Well, as mentioned, only 15 KOs and 24 wins. He's lost two times. He's only two losses against Tony Tubbs. Mike and the Mike Bounty Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, he later avenged those fights. You, you know, you know how you know when a fight has reached the doldrums where nothing's much is happening but the same rounds. You're, you're reading the scores, and I read the gloves have Grant written. I mean, can you imagine reading the gloves in a fight? I'm, I'm reading a guy's name Grant on the gloves. Wow. He, he's got to change something. He's got to start something. I can wonder just threw a nice right uppercut, and believe it or not, Ferdy, he threw in the left hook. The best combination he's landed in many rounds. Right. It also right. says. H.A. on the left sleeve of the trunks of, of Henry Akinwande, which of course stands for his, his name, or in this case, it would also stand for Ha, as he might have the last laugh. Sorry, folks. Break. 30 seconds left in round number nine, and the pace has really slowed. But that cut continues to look terrible over the right eye of Zulkin. There's no drama to this fight because it's just a repetitive series of setups where Zulkin doesn't appear to have anything to save him. And that's it for round number nine. Here we see Henry Akin one. He's finally going to throw the uppercut. He takes his, you see where his right hand is right here? Okay, he takes that right uppercut, and he takes it right up the middle here, and then from the other side, he brings the hook around. You watch him as we roll tape. He throws it perfectly. Little tiny jab, uppercut, and a hook. Bull shots, clean, perfect. That's what we were talking about, me and Ferdy, before. He's got to throw the left hook behind the right hand.
Well, back in the ER. Okay. Look, look, take a look at the side there. Take a look. No, I don't want to put no more. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's a good Deep breath. Out, out. Come on, Let's go. Hey. You know it's big, but it's not big enough to stop for a heavyweight title fight. And we hit the double figures. It is round number 10. And Zulkin, despite that terrible cut, continues. Well, he may not be in the same class, the same league as the champion, Henry Akinwani, but uh, he's showing... Holy and on, guts. Come on, Henry. Right. Well, come he on. has that old European work ethic, too. I'm sure he's in great shape, as it, as it appears that he is. He's working hard, and he's trying. He just doesn't have what it takes to compromise that can wind Come on, work inside. Great. Step back. Step back. Well, Zulkin's strength is that he is an aggressive fighter. But Akinwande has, has neutralized Zulkin with step back, step back. the jab on the right hand. Get up. Get up. The online scoring, oh, a bit of a surprise. It's it's close. Henry Akinwande, five rounds to Zulkin's four. What do you think of that? That's well, you know, the sixth round you could have gave to Zulkin. Come on, work and so far this round, maybe a little I bit, but outside that, I'm finding a little difficult time with that score. Yeah, well, I, I gave one round to Zulkin, and let me tell you, that, that must be a big Russian contingent voting someplace. And with all due respect to our viewers at home, it is so much more difficult to score a fight on TV than live. Yeah, and, and you know, you really don't know what makes up the, the scoring public. Well, round 10 uh, out. continues a frantic pace Step in the back. opening, I'd say, six or seven rounds, and it's a slow down. Up in one day, uh, tiring out from throwing all those punches, and, of course, Zulkin getting hammered. So he's weathered. Step back. Step back. Let him go. And now they just hug one another. There's the jab, pretty jab by uh, Akinwande, looking to set up the right, doubling and tripling up on the jab. Chopping right by Zulkin, but doing nothing. Akinwande's conditioning now starting to prevail a little bit. He's starting to be a little more accurate, and Akinwande tiring a bit. Akinwande wearing a knee brace on his left knee. Do you remember that being there in the Jeremy Williams fight? Yeah. Uh, I think you went, uh-oh, another little trip to the doctor. Here's Flip Pomaski. Look at me. No, of course. Yep, it's over. Pomaski recommends to Richard Steele end the fight, and that is it here in round 10 as Henry Akinwati retains his title. That's a big cut, Steve. That's a big cut. I don't mind him uh, and because he had no shot. Look, look at the big lump he has on, on his forehead here. I mean, his whole face was getting battered. I don't have any objection to that stoppage at all. Mentioned that earlier, not only the cut, but the, the welt that has turned into a large lump over the bridge of the nose near the right eye. And Very ugly look. So Henry Akinwande remains the tallest world champion in history as he retains his WBO title. Also remains undefeated now at 31 and 0 in his first defense of the championship. And with this win, he now positions himself for a possible unification bout someday with a fellow named Mike Tyson. It would certainly make, as mentioned before, for an interesting public relations photo with the towering 6-7 Akinwande standing next to the compact Mike Tyson.